I'm Chris Fox, and this is The Bourbonite. Whiskey and bourbon have uh, a sort of tough guy mentality. Um, rockers, metalheads, ages over have been known to uh, to drink the stuff, although more often than not the cheaper stuff. But nonetheless, uh, it, it's kind of synonymous with that that tough guy culture. Kentucky itself, the birthplace of sorts of bourbon, uh, is also quite infamous for uh, kind of having that hardened personality and, and maybe it's because of the 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 atmosphere the land the um maybe even the, the economics of the area it's really hard to say but um but certainly the area of kentucky has been known to kind of breed that bad badass attitude to that same end bourbon and and, and whiskey have also kind of been dubbed a a power drink um specifically drinking it neat has been dubbed kind of the the, the powerful um, oligarchy type of, of, of drink. Um, this can actually be seen quite often if you're familiar with Netflix's uh, House of Cards. Um, they're constantly drinking whiskey, neat, out of glasses, in all sorts of environments. Why? I don't fully understand, but it is synonymous with power as well. Now, the real question is, why exactly is, uh, is bourbon whiskey so tightly wound with this kind of tough guy power culture um, when really, I mean, it is extremely accessible, fairly inexpensive when you're looking at the low end stuff. I mean, wh where, where does this kind of tough guy but power come from? I would argue that these cultures are, are tied to it, but in the same sense, these cultures are also drawn to whiskey and bourbon. And uh, that's kind of for three reasons, at least in my kind of understanding of it. One, bourbon and whiskey are not fruity, nor are they easily mixable drinks. Um, it is, you know, there, there are people that mix their, their bourbon and whiskey, and, and that's totally cool, but it is something that if you really want to actually taste the whiskey or bourbon, it's kind of a challenge to find something that mixes with it properly. And, uh, and, and certainly, if you're drinking it neat or even on the rocks, there is no fruit to be found. You get hints and notes in the, in the smells and, and, and the, you know, the, the, the taste, but it, it's, it's not by any means fruity. Two, most drinkers of this stuff, at least the ones that um, run in the circles that are concerned about the culture, usually recommend to drink it straight or neat or maybe on the rocks. Um, even people who mix it will will say that you know tasting truly tasting your bourbon and whiskey has to come from drinking it fairly straight. Folks will recommend to drink other liquors straight as well. I mean tequila and rum and, and other high end versions of those. Um, people will always recommend to drink neat because you know if you're spending a, a lot of money on an expensive bottle of rum, you want to be able to taste the rum and not throw some coke on it or whatever else you might be mixing it with. Um, but bourbon and whiskey are the ones that, um, as a general rule, are dominantly had straight. Three, early miners and the cowboys of the West um, generally would drink whiskey or bourbon around their campfires. Um, those, those jobs were synonymous with, with tough guys. Um, you know, the, the, the typical American tough guy uh, personality is kind of precipitates out of that cowboy image. And uh, they would sit around their campfires drinking whiskey out of their tin cups, which also doubled as tools. I, I don't know what could be more tough guy-esque than to be literally drinking out of something that you use at a tool as a tool at another point. These tough guy types really don't have a whole lot in common other than the fact that they're tough guy types and they're kind of tied to this culture. So what, where's the connection? Where, where do these things kind of meld into each other? Whiskey and bourbon are not easy to make. Um, their distillers are known for being dedicated to their craft. And I mean, I guess you really have to be when a lot of times you're gonna age something for two, five or 25 years. 
um, it really requires some serious uh, gusto to, to stick to what you're doing. To that end, making whiskey and bourbon is also about not taking shortcuts while also being innovative within something that has a very stringent code of creation. You have to be creative within a small box. Whiskey is also painstakingly simple. The, the, the entire process, while uh, rigorous, is, is fairly uncomplex, but it delivers some seriously complex smells and tastes that vary drastically depending on an area, depending on the mash bill, and any number of other minor factors. So you're talking about something that is very simple in character, but then at the same time, incredibly complex. I would argue that those who are attracted to this stuff, whether they recognize it or not, carry very similar traits to the drink itself. Long season to become what they are, yet if you wait longer or change something minor, they become something completely different. Maybe that's all a little romantic, but it can't be argued that the whiskey culture breeds grit and just sheer badassery, or maybe vice versa. So if you like what you've seen, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, because there's plenty more bourbon and whiskey culture to be had. And just sheer badassery. I used it again. <laughs> Oh, that's the last thing. Oh, it's vice versa. Vice versa. That's the key detail of the whole thing. Nah. Slow mo.